Willie D. Live. Flex Alexander. What's up? What's up, man? What's up, King? Hey, man. Everything is good, brother. Man, it is so good to see you, man. We were just talking about basketball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know if people really understand, man. You a dog on that basketball court. Yeah, man. I used to, I used to have fun out there. You know, I played high school, played two years of college, man. My dream was to go to the NBA, but, you know, partied my way out of school and, uh, you know, came back home and just ended up into dancing and hip-hop, man. It changed my life. How did you party your way out of basketball um, you know I, you get to a school and you're like wait a minute i can you know it's up to me if i gotta go to class <laughs> you know what i mean like now, what you, school was this chasing st augustine yeah. uh-huh right in north carolina man yeah. yeah man you be flying i'm talking yeah. about just taking off and you think you could have won one of those dunk contests uh at that point probably because you know yeah i had some hops man i had yeah. some hops for a while i was i was dunking up until i was about 46 and yeah. Then, yeah, and then and then the next year I went. Yeah, uh, I never had bad knees. Yeah. It just went away. I went to try to jump one day. It just they just wasn't there no more. Couldn't just get just height. couldn't get it no more. I was like, yeah, it's it's, it's time to shoot jump shots now. Right. And everybody I know, I got friends now, you know, in their fifties, you know, playing in these fifty and older leagues, you know, popping Achilles. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all, man? Huh. <laughs> Golf is the game now. Yeah. Golf, Golf is, the game. is the game. Yes. Yeah, I love man. That. I, They've been trying to get me out on that golf course, man. I know I, I know I need to get out you there. You got to do it. There's so much to do out there. You got to do it. So much to gain. By yeah. Just out there. It's 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 a, it's a it's so much to the game of golf. It's it's besides the physical. People look at the physical and say, "Oh, it's stupid. You're just hitting a little white ball around." But no, you're playing against the course. You're playing against yourself mentally, temperament. You know what I mean? Are you gonna play fair? You gonna you know put down the right score? Are you not? Like it's it's a character game. It's it's you know it, you spend five hours out there with a group of people and you find out a lot about people during that time. So golf is deep. Yeah. Plus the nature. Man, you know what else is deep is that role. That role you play uh, in, in 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 the, in the play uh, New, New Jack, Jack City. City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that role is deep, and I, and it caught me off guard. I would have never thought <laughs> that you could play a good crackhead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I know you can act. You know, yeah, yeah. obviously you're, you're an actor, <laughs> but I never like man. You that could have this could actually be you know. Um, a multiple choice, like your favorite New Jack City crackhead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which one is your favorite Pookie? Who did Pookie the best? Yeah. That was some good stuff, man. Thank you, man. How much of that was improv? Um, a lot of, you know, the funny stuff was, was improv. I try to keep the, the you know, the integrity of, of whatever the scene, you know, calls for the scene. But, uh, of course, I'm going to throw my flair in it, you know, have some jokes in there. But, um, you know, coming from that experience, coming from New York, coming up where I had, you know, two of my brothers on crack, you know, a mom that was a functioning cocaine addict. So mm-hmm. I got to see it up close and personal. Mm-hmm. Um, so those things, you know, I took into consideration and you know like when, when Pookie is in his his NA meeting and he's you know turning his life around you know I went to those meetings with my brothers I went with my mother I mean I used to walk with my mom to the cocaine spot you know what I mean because I didn't want nobody to mess with her mm. um, so those things I, you know I took with me man because I, I saw it up close man I saw what it did this crack just destroyed man 85 when that joint hit it destroyed just generations yeah yeah. Did your mom ever beat it? Yeah, all my they all beat it. Yeah. You know, I lost one brother to AIDS, but they all beat it clean. They got thirty something plus years clean now, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, my mom's eighty one. You know what I mean? Uh, my 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 brother is turning sixty four. So you know, I'm thankful. So you got a brother sixty four. You the baby. Yeah, you yeah I'm the baby. baby. I'm the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is that like? Are, are, how many kids? Okay, so <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> so my mom, uh, my brothers, they had a, a different dad. So I had uh, three brothers uh, there and a sister. Um, two of those brothers passed. So I got my one brother and my one sister. She lives in Florida. Then my dad had a whole another set of uh, you know kids. And 
I met one of my brothers. Well, the whole, my bro, I got two more brothers and another sister. And then I hear I have a Puerto Rican brother and an Italian and black brother. So I don't know where they at. If you're out there, please look, look for me. Um, and I uh, met my brother Todd and Rob uh, up in the projects, man. I was playing basketball. You know, and I had attitude, you know what I mean? I'm doing my thing. And this dude said, man, yo, your attitude, man, you need to stop acting like that. You too cocky. You remind me of this dude, Todd. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. So he kept saying it. He kept saying it. So next week I come and he kept saying it. And he said, man, yo, man, I'm telling you, you look like this dude, man. I work with this dude, Rob, and his brother's Todd. And I said, well, my father's name was Robert. And he just said, this might be your brother. Gave me the number. I called, my brother Ty picked up, said, yo, this Ty, I was like, yeah, this, I think I'm your brother. We went, I met him, and literally, it was like looking at, you know, a, a mirror image. Like, we, we call the ghetto twins. He was born March the same year, I was born April. Mm. <laughs> so a month apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. Man, so, that, that's crazy. Yeah, it was deep, man, it was, it was deep, but, it, you know, it was that connection I had to my father, because he wasn't around. You know, so for, and and I always just long for that connection of family. So I was happy. You're married to Shanice. Yes. Mm-hmm. How, how how long have y'all been married? February uh, 2024 will be 24 years. 24 years. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you were you ever married before? No, never married before. Is is the reason that you're so dedicated to the marriage mm-hmm. and committed to the marriage mm-hmm. is because of how you had you long for that type of uh, I think family yeah that's part of it and and especially with my kids you know I have a 22 year old daughter 19 year old son uh and just not having that you know and 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 growing up without that you know so I, I didn't have a uh instruction manual on you know how to be a husband how to be a father how to do this how to balance a household and all that although we work together as a team um, it, it was a lot and there's still things that you deal with that I realize, you know, cause I, I you know, I mean, I, I take therapy and I have a therapist and talk and, and it's things that I've learned that I've suppressed that, you know, as a man, you carry, you know, this anger that I had, you know, for a long time for my dad not being there. Um, but then having to understand he had his own things going on and, and uh, I can't, you know, hold that forever. I got to let that go. So for, for a lot of years, I, I held on to that anger. But moving forward to having kids and a family, I said I want to be able to give them something different, let them see something different. So um, it's been, you know, it's been eye-opening for me just the things that I unpacked, you know, with therapy and and um, just being, being a dad and, and just, you know, just trying to do the best I can. Yeah. yeah. When you talk about therapy, mm-hmm. how often do you go to therapy? I do it maybe twice a month. You know, maybe every two weeks I'll do it, twice a month, something like that. Did you mm-hmm. ever go to therapy and think to yourself, oh, well, let, me, let me back up. Mm-hmm. Do, have you had the same therapist the entire time? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so when you went in the first time, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming that, you was like, yo, that was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Like, so you went back. Yeah, you went back for more. Yeah, because I be thinking like, man, how can I cut out the middle, man? Like, <laughs> yeah, get, man, just tell me what I need. <laughs> can you give me everything in one shot, man? Yeah, so yeah. I ain't got to keep coming back. Again, yeah, try to. Do, do you ever? Did you ever? think that your therapist was probably trying to like string you along so you can get the money in, in, in the, the beginning money. in the beginning i was like <laughs> you know because they make everything sound so deep you yeah. know make everything sound so existential and you know all of this you know self-discovery you know i'm like come on man i know who i am but uh as you go along you realize you, you know you're starting to break down walls and break things down that you didn't know were there and things, us especially as black men, I think a lot of us suppress. Mm-hmm. A lot of us go, man, I, you know, I just tuck it over here. You know, I can deal with that later. Let me just tuck it over here. And, um, you know, it's been amazing. It's, it's been amazing. I don't regret any any bit of it at all. Your mom, mm-hmm. is your, do, you, do you believe that your mom is an amazing woman? Oh, man, my mom is... 
my mom is everything, man. My mom, I watched her work two, three jobs. Her and my grandmother, you know, they raised us. Um, go through what she went through, addiction, you know, abuse in relationships. Um, man, I watched so much, and she she came through all of that with a smile. Never complained, never stopped, never gave up. And it was a team. It was her and my grandmother, and it's funny because I used to play them against each other. You know, my my grandmother was the one who said no. You know, but I, I knew I could go to my mom. She'll say, "Yeah." I say, "Hey, man, you know, my friends are hanging out." My grandma said, "No, you need to, you know, sit in your room and read." And I go to my mom. Mom, you know, all my friends are outside. She ain't going outside. You know, she got hip to that after a while. But um, yeah, they they work as a great team. My mom worked hard and honest, and um, and I've just seen her go through a lot. So when I broke into the business and and started to make it you know whatever that means be able to make money and all that you know i just i just wanted to take care of her and my grandmother you know and that's what i did up until you know even when my grandmother passed she didn't even know that i was taking care of all the bills and and everything because my grandmother never said anything um and uh she just was always grateful and i just like mom you deserve it i wish i could do more you know but um she's she's great mom's is great so where do you get your your fortitude from? What do you, what do you what do you get that 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 positive trait that you have in you? Mm-hmm. Like you have a you have a very calm spirit. Mm-hmm. You're a likable guy. You have seen a lot. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't I ain't seen what you guys have seen. I <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. You've been in Hollywood. Yeah. And, you know, you've you've seen your mom fight addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, you, your dad wasn't around. Mm-hmm. So I know that there's had to be a lot of tough times. Mm-hmm. You know, how did Flex maintain his sanity? You know, how did you do that without falling off the cliff? Man, I still, I don't, again, I think it kind of goes back to that suppressing and like, you know, okay, I'm going to get through this. Yeah, it'd be all right. I'm gonna get through this. I'll be all right. Like when uh, my wife and I, we did our family did a reality show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, and uh, about the struggles that we had gone through, and it wasn't because we were out balling and just spending money recklessly. I bought a bunch of real estate because I was taught that's smart. You know, I'm gonna pass this down to to my kids, and they can pass it down to their kids, and so on and so forth. And um, we had to crash, and I think it was '08 lost everything um and even during that time we it, sheriff and the mark they came to the house i was on my way to an audition um knocked on the door told us we had five minutes to get our stuff my wife called me she's crying i'm like what's going on i turn around i go back literally they're standing there grab we grabbing stuff in bags the kids were at school and we literally went from there, and we went to a, a hotel, went to the Embassy Suites. Shout out for that free breakfast. Uh, <laughs> we went to the Embassy Suites, and then uh, we had a, a, a pastor at the time um, came, you know, helped us out uh, for that first week. And then I had shot a commercial, and then uh, a couple of weeks later, like that money started kicking in. So uh, and then we had friends. Uh, we had friends that just really really stepped in and and helped man and we were able to take that money you know get a place uh rent a house and um get back on our feet but even during all of that time i just kept i was like it's gonna be all right i always felt that because i i've I've seen so much of the other side like i'm like this is nothing uh, you know, my wife, she, you know, she was a child star. And, you know, they took care of her well. She grew up and, and and she's seen struggle, but, you know, it affects her differently. You know, she she likes that security. And, and I just was like, it's going to be all right. Don't worry. You know, if you're going to pray, then you can't pray and worry at the same time. They cancel each other out. It's an oxymoron. So I just um I just kept that attitude that it's gonna be all right and push through it because I I just felt like I've seen the bottom of the bottom, 
you know, sitting there and watching a brother smoke crack or watching your mom getting high and walking your mom to the spot. Or when I, I lived in a shelter in Brooklyn and, and, and homeless and I just, I saw the bottom of the bottom and I just felt like this was easy to get through. You know, if we could just stay focused, it's going to be all right. You know, and that's, that's really in a probably long roundabout way. I just, I just kept pushing and it's just my faith. You know, I just knew, I was like, I ain't go through all that to get here. And then now it's just going to all crumble apart. You know, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that man kicks in, like, that part is the part you got to fight because you like, man, you know, you can't even provide a stable place for your family. And that's the part I had to fight. That's the part I had to fight. And isn't it always okay, man? It's always going to be okay, yeah. man. Like, it's never as bad as you think it is, mm -hmm. you know, like, because I'm, I'm – sitting here and I'm listening to you and I'm like, he talking about me, <laughs> you know, cause yeah. I've been there also. Yeah. And my default is my upbringing. Mm -hmm. Like it was tough. Yeah. So I, I always go like, no matter what I'm going through it, I say, I'll say to myself, man, I survived fifth ward, man. What you talking about? Yeah. You know, I yeah. survived a place where going to the store was an adventure. <sighs> You know, yeah. just walking to the store, the corner store was yeah. an adventure. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily guaranteed to make it back. Wow. You know. Yeah. I seen it happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, a, a friend of mine cut my hair one day. And he was 13, I was 14. And he left to go to the store. Mm -hmm. Less than five minutes later, somebody's knocking on my door. They just killed, da, 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 you know, oh, man. 13 years old, got killed in, ran over on purpose. Oh. You know, so, uh, but it's always going to be okay. Like, and yeah. as long as you breathe and you got action. Yeah, man. And, uh, it, you know, it says a lot about your character, but it also says a lot about your wife's character, you mm -hmm. know, because women do like that security. Yeah. And when that security is interrupted, when that security is in doubt, mm -hmm. a lot of them will dip. Yeah. They'll catch up out of here. <laughs> Man, how, how, yeah. how, did you, how did you catch Shanice? I mean, what, 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 was, that, what, was, that, what was that like? What was that, that, that meeting like, you know, when you first met uh, her and, we and, and met, how you pursued? Did you pursue her or did she pursue no, it you? Was, it was totally different. We met. I was moving into the building that she lived in. My cousin and I, we were moving my couch in. We were taking it upstairs. She was coming out of the elevator. And um, I'm like, oh, Shanice? She's like, oh, Flex? Like, we knew of each other, you know, obviously in the okay. business. And um, Oh, when she said your name, yeah. I bet you was like, yeah. I was just like, but honestly, I wasn't even, oh, you I, yeah, I wasn't even thinking. Okay. I was just, you know, I yeah. was so busy thinking, you know, moving. And, and then I was like, hey, where you headed? She said, oh, I'm going to meet my cousin. I'm going to a Lauryn Hill concert, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, well, hey, just give me a number. Let's keep in touch. And the give me a number wasn't give me a number. It was just like, yeah. you know, let's keep in touch. And um, she's like, all right, I'm going to go upstairs. And this is before you could pull out the celly and boom, 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 boom. You know, we had pages and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she said, I'm going to go upstairs. Let me call my cousin. I get a pen. And then, um, you know, and then I'll get come back pen, down. A get pen. a pen. <laughs> wow. So we sat there. We, my cousin and I, we waited for like maybe 25 minutes, something like that. I was like, man, I'm out. So we left. And about two weeks later, in the, in the building we lived in, you pull in the garage and you go to the elevator, you park, you can go to the elevator. So I saw her. I said, all right, now this time you're going to give me a number. She's like, all right. And then really, honestly, it was just, we just talked every day. We just talked, yo, what's up, blah, 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 blah. And it was nothing, you know, extra or any of that stuff. Um, and then uh, I saw how she was around her family and her friends and, you know, uh, just everybody loved her and, and how she was. And, and I believe it was um, it was a, her birthday party. I went to her mom's place. She went over there, and the party was there. And I just saw everybody. And I was like, oh, man. I'm like, you know, this is really cool. And she was rehearsing to go on tour with um, NSYNC. And uh, <laughs> we would always talk about, you know, soulmates and this and that. So I roll up to her, 
And I, I, I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to get ready to head out. She comes outside. I said, no, you always talking about soulmates and all that. I said, you know, your soulmate could be right in your face and you don't even know it. Bam! Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's when it changed. Yeah. I think that's when it changed. Yeah. We we officially probably dated, I think, three months. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and 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 that was it, man. And I uh, got married after three months? Yeah. Three and a half months we started. We we planned it. We got married that uh, that next year. It was, uh, gosh, I proposed. And, then, you know, we had a few months to plan. And then we got that February 19th, 2000. Did any of the homies hit you with the Andre 3000? Don't do it. Reconsider. <laughs> no, no, nope. no, no. Support that. Supportive, great friends, man. You know, Emmett Smith, good, good friend of mine. You know, great brother to talk to, man. Okay. I, a lot, a lot. Shouts out to him. Yeah, shouts out to my brother, man. We world. Had, uh, is yeah. it, should I say world? Okay, I just say NFL <laughs> leading Russia. Russia, yes. Yes, yeah, <laughs> leading Russia. Yes, yeah. yes. I had, a, I had a, a great bunch of friends, man. So yeah. it was nothing but love, support, family. Um, yeah, man. And it was just, you know, it's a whole new life. Um, and then in that time, going back, now, I, at one point, when we were just, you know, talking as friends, I was going to leave and go back to New York because things were slow. I had done a show called Where I Live in 1993. My friend Dougie Doug had a show, so I played his, his friend on there. And then I did a show called Homeboys in Outer Space. <laughs> uh, and then I did a show called uh, Brooklyn, not Brooklyn South, uh, Total Security, uh, Stephen Bochco with uh, Jim Belushi. That got canceled. And nothing was happening. So, you know, I had this idea about the show. Um, it was a friend of mine from Harlem, was a, a, a single father. And I was like, oh, man, I, we used to laugh at him. Like, you can't go hang out. You can't do nothing and blah, blah, blah. And then I saw this uh, Coca-Cola commercial uh, with LL Cool J doing his daughter's hair. And they had, like, crooked ponytails. And then um, I was like, man, that's a show. Uh, and then, um, yeah, just, just, I was going to leave. And then she was like, nah, it's just like, you too talented. You know, you can't leave. Why don't you just come up with your own thing? I said, well, I got this idea and, you know, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And, um, I had a friend at the time that, uh, lived with me and we tried our version to write it, you know, gave, paid him to write it. And this game is like, you know, it, you know, you can write something and then it goes through so many stages, you know, agency, this, that, and they feel like, okay, this is not suitable enough or it's not going to make it. It's like, that's what it is. But the idea, I still said, okay, well, I want to take it and continue. Tried another writer, didn't work. Um, and then finally uh, got the right writer who uh, ended up being my showrunner. Uh, God rest her soul. She passed away. Um, and, um, we shot the pilot and the pilot actually didn't get picked up. Pilot didn't get picked up. And I remember, <laughs> uh, me and my wife, we driving and I got the call that it wasn't getting picked up and we pulled over, we crying, we like, ah! cause I'm like, man, she's got married. What I'm gonna do? And then we put on Mary Mary's, I just can't give up now. We crying. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'll never forget that, man. And then, um, you know, it just kind of got through it, had some some shows in, in between. And then I remember our year anniversary coming back from uh, Santa Barbara, manager called, hey man, you know, uh, you still want to do the show? I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah, well, Paramount wants to do it. I'm like, oh man. I said, yeah, the head of Paramount is going to call you. You know, the head of UPN is going to call you. They're starting this new network calls me and he says hey man hey i'm so sorry we didn't pick you up before we should have done it he said but you had nothing to worry about now this guy was an executive at disney when i was on shows over there so he always you know thought i was talented they had given me a couple of deals so um there it was man and we just you know we took off you know and kyla i um you know saw her on a commercial uh nike commercial they were playing like the Little Rascals music and she was playing like this innocent girl and talking to Lisa Leslie and these WNBA players. And they go, oh, you want an autograph? And then she go, no, because you need to rebound better. And boom, boom, boom. It was so cute. I was like, that's what I want to be my daughter. And that's how it happened. And so one-on-one mm -hmm. ends up going into the history books 
of sitcoms. Mm-hmm. Y'all had five, was it five seasons? Five, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, TV time, yeah, five, yeah, so a hundred and something episodes. Like hundred and something yeah. episodes. Mm-hmm. And so, so you are credited as the creator. Well, I didn't get the uh, credit as a creator. You didn't get that. It's, 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 a, it's a technicality, or, uh, I should say, not learning or knowing about registering your ideas, which is my fault, and the, the, the guild, you know, which is right, credits the writer who writes the story, who writes it, you know, even if I'm telling them the story, they credit the writer that writes it. And physically writes it. Physically writes it. So it was, you know, one I had to learn. And, um, but it, it just, it was a lesson learned and we got 500 something episodes out of it and we had fun, man. It was great. It was great. You get residuals? Yes. Yes. Are they big checks or are they solid? They, they start to dwindle down after a time, <laughs> you know. But when these new networks pick it up, like Clio TV and some other networks, um, you get like a nice little uh, another kick of, of residuals and stuff. So, right. but it, but but moreover, the residual for me is the the new audience that that I, that I've gotten, especially during the pandemic. Uh, a group called Strong Black Lead. Um, they really pushed forward to get our shows on Netflix. So it was uh, Monique, uh, Girlfriends, our show, and I think it was another show. It was right during the pandemic. I think it was around end of 2020, something like that. They put it on Netflix, and it just went off, like, last year, October, and I got a whole new, like, generation of fans. I'm talking 10-year-old, Stevie Wonder's daughter, his youngest daughter, I think she was turning like, I don't know, 12 or something. And she was a huge fan. And I couldn't believe that. So that right there was so valuable, so valuable. And then that, you know, allowed me to also get back out, go to stand up, get back into my stand up because I had stopped doing stand up while I did the show because I didn't want to travel and, and not be there. And I turn around and my kids are grown and I don't know them. And, and uh, uh, I just, um, you know, I took that time off and I missed stand up. And my good buddy, Chris Spencer, such a solid dude, man. That dude was like, man, you need to get your ass back on stage. You know, and I had to fear at first because I had been off for so long. And it's like, no, nah, man, you need to get back on stage. So he just would take me. He said, you're going to open for me. And I would just go. And I would host and I would just go. And then it just started to build up, build up to where I just started getting back to headlining myself. I know Chris Spencer, uh, mm-hmm. but I really don't want to misspeak here. Mm-hmm. Is, is is he still good? Like Chris? Chris. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because I was like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, things be happening, so, you know, so much stuff be happening. Yeah, yeah, oh, Chris is fine. Get, yeah. 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 Chris is one of those, like, unsung heroes of comedy. Yeah. Know? Like, he one of those dudes that's been around for a minute. Mm-hmm. And you know uh, he knows everybody. Yeah, you man. Know, he, he, you know, he's been consistently doing his thing. Yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, shot, shot, shots out to uh, to Chris. Big shout out to uh, Chris Spencer, big man. Shout out to Chris. Yeah, um, we call him Switzerland. That dude is, he's right. He keeps everybody together, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody together, and just motivating, man. Like yeah. I really, truly, you know. Uh, owe that to him you know what I mean just to help I mean my wife would tell me too man you gotta get back out there and but just for someone in the business where I don't really have people that really do that you know I've known people longer in this business that haven't done that and and he just is like yo come on and now we have a a, a TV show together we've written and um just you know I cherish that yeah have you heard about the, well, uh, I'm sure you heard about the, 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 the Cat Williams statements and yes. stuff. Uh, Cat uh, was talking about how a lot of comedians and celebrities in general mm-hmm. have sold their souls in booty holes, <sighs> uh, you know, for uh, access <laughs> for access in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, uh, 
<laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know nothing. I mean, I mean you, you're, you're in the game. I mean, have you ever seen anything out there that's anything wild out there? Man, I don't know nothing, boy. I'm telling you, I'm Switzerland. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You see it? it yeah. I, listen, man. Like, I played Michael Jackson. Obviously, it ain't. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you did play Michael yeah, Jackson, I did. man. How, how did How did that you know, how did that even come to be like? Because I remember you talking about playing the role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you some, on some interview. I saw uh-huh. you talking about it. Yeah. And you were saying that you were surprised that you got the call. I was surprised. Dude, listen, I get the call. My agent's like, yeah, they're doing this Michael Jackson thing, and they, and they didn't want to sit down and talk to you. I'm like, really? I said, they know I'm 6'4", right? You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, cool. I go. Uh, over to the uh, MTV of VH1 offices in Santa Monica and meet the director, producer, and we're talking. He's a great, great dude. I mean, just positive energy, very, you could tell like he was at Woodstock or something like that. He was just like, we just want to do this homage and, you know, and just channel the loving <laughs> spirit and blah, 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 and, and just really let Michael know because he was alive at the time. Uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. We talk and I'm telling him how much of a fan I am. You know, I got to meet him and and just, and that was really it. We just had a conversation. I ain't thinking nothing. I'm like, I ain't read nothing. I'm like, okay, cool. You had a conversation with Mike? No, conversation with uh, the producer and director. Okay. We just having a conversation. Yeah. Like, you no, know, because normally you go in, you read, and do none of that. They didn't, it was no script. Mm-hmm. I leave, I leave. A couple of days later, I get a call. I say, hey, man, they, they want you to do it. I'm like, are you serious? And I get it. want you to. I, I, I was, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, this, you know, this is what they want to pay. I was like, oh, okay. So they're serious. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So we, we go to shoot it and um, we shoot it up in Calgary. Uh, and I wanted to get my makeup artist uh, that was on my show um, to, to let them do it. But they were like, oh, we got to hire a certain amount of, you know, Canadian and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, cool. But when I walked in there, I, I, I knew I was in trouble. I saw the, the dog when they had a prosthetic nose on the Take, I was like, oh, damn. I said, I'm not wearing that, y'all. I'm not wearing that. <laughs> then they sprayed the, the stuff on my hand. It was ashy. I was like, and this is before social media. So I, I'm just, I just, I just did, I didn't know. I didn't know. And uh, it's so funny because people tag me with memes, you know, with that makeup. It's so fun. <laughs> at first, I used to be so hurt, but then I was like, you know what? It is kind of funny. And I, and I just laugh at it now, man. And I tell them, look, man, you know, Hey, they said, man, what made you do that? I said, hey, man, babies need to eat. So, you know, I said, but one one thing, you know, y- y'all can focus on is that I've always held it down for the culture, you know, no matter what. How's the babies doing? They're doing great. They're great. Right. What, great. What are they doing? Like, what are they doing? It, they got the bug. My daughter just got an agent. Uh, she's singing and modeling and stuff like that. We she actually sing like a mom. She's getting there. She's getting there. She's got a. She's got more of like a, an Aaliyah style, like very, you know, very like soft, high. She's, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of her because she's stepping out, you know, into her own. Um, we actually have a, have a podcast called Daddy Daughter Dance, and um, you know, it's her and myself, and we're talking about all subjects, you know, with fathers and daughters, man. Okay. Yeah, so we well, I'm excited about that. Uh, we shot a few before I left. And um I just wanted to do that with her because I want her to have that space to open up. You know, ask me the questions she wants to ask, even the tough ones. You know, we talk about everything. So, uh I'm excited about that. Um my my son, he's into music. He is a complete artist. He was playing basketball for a while, but he uh he just really he just lost the passion. He just said it's it's gotten too political and and you know it's 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 a lot it's a lot. We went to I think four different states in six weeks and between the, the traveling and the, the you know they ain't giving you no discounts on the hotels or the flights. Then you pay for the tournaments. Then you pay for the uniforms and this and this and that and. And they're playing sometimes three games a day, and I just I, I don't think that's healthy. And and how old is your son? He's nineteen. So did you see? Do you do you see NBA style potential in him? I when he was in it and he was focused in it, I I really believe that he could have he could have made it. He just really because he's the type when he sets his mind, he goes 
are like a thousand percent. He's that kid. Like, if he make up his mind, he's like, boom. But if he ain't in it, he's a thousand percent not in it. So he kept playing for us because he thought he was letting us down. And when he finally sat down to tell us, he was having anxiety about it and he was stressed. And he finally sat down to tell us, like, I just, I don't have a passion for it anymore. I lost the love for it. And we were like, that's fine. We want you to be happy. We want you, you, your well-being is more important than anything. And this is coming out of the pandemic, you know, where a lot of kids were dealing with anxiety and dealing with depression and dealing with all kind of stuff. And we just wanted him to be okay. So he was relieved that we were not, you know, pressuring that. Because I said, son, I can't live through you. I enjoy playing basketball. Of course, you know, it was fun to watch you play. But I can't live through you, man. You have to live your life. Did he replace it with something else? Oh, music. Like, he loves music. He's, su- he's Willie, he's an artist, artist. Like, I mean, he listens to everybody. He listens to old Michael Jackson. He listens to, you know, soft rock groups. He, lis- he listens to everything. He sits in there. He's teaching himself keyboards. And, you know, I'm just letting, you know, we're letting him find his voice. You know, because everyone will say, oh, yeah, you know, my child is a star. My child, I just want him to find his voice yeah. and be happy. That's all I care about. If he wasn't good, mm-hmm. would you tell him? Oh, I would tell him. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, hey, so, uh, um, you got this UPS application for you. You know what I mean? Not, not, there's nothing wrong with UPS. Actually, the benefits are good. Yeah. I would tell him we had that type of relationship. Like when he was playing ball and he wasn't doing something correct or wasn't working hard enough, I would, I would, I would get in his behind. I'd be like, hey, man, it, you, you here, you quitting? Da, da, da. There's somebody over here. They, they still working. It's a kid over here working. It's a kid that doesn't have the new uh, uh, Kobe's who don't have that. You know, I would get, get on him because I want him to understand. You know, they, they, he, he had a little better, I won't say a little, a lot better than I did. And I, I didn't want him to lose sight of that, that blessing that he had. So I definitely, I don't, I don't hold no punches with him. At all, we we bump heads a little bit sometime. I think he's trying to, you know, he's nineteen and his voice is a little deep now, so he try he trying to be that man now. <laughs> when he was fourteen, fifteen, like mm-hmm. in high school, mm-hmm. like ninth grade. See, ninth grade once they get to high school is mm-hmm. typically when they try their dad, mm-hmm. and and I surmise the reason is because when they get to high school, they're competing against boys who are oftentimes as big or bigger than their dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they playing sports and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They're competing against them in sports and they're also competing against them with girls. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And so they sizing these dot dudes up mm-hmm. and they looking at dad like, man. Yeah, I could take I him. I could take him. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing you know, you ding, ding, fried and shake. And, and you didn't brought out the worst of pops. And pops had to pop you. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't gotten to that. He's, well, well I, I, yeah. I don't think it'll get there. Yeah, he's been if, very if respectful. If it hadn't gotten there by now, yeah. I don't think it'll get there. Because yeah. I, I always knew that that time would come with my mm-hmm, son. Mm-hmm. And we had our moment. Mm-hmm. And that that is when he was fifteen, and yeah. he's twenty four. We we hadn't had an issue yeah. since that day, yeah. and I didn't have to put my hands on him. I yeah. just had to talk to yeah, him. Yeah, let him know. <laughs> let, him, let him know. Like, talk yeah, to him. Well, yeah, I, I love you for real, man. <laughs> Do not bring that out of me. Yeah, you know, I love you for real. I don't, yeah. don't. I don't want that on my record. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And we never had any more issues. In fact, I just come from dinner with him. I feel oh. like we, we came to your oh, show. Oh, came to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, show, sir. Yeah, show, man. You know? Yeah, I saw so, him, man. Yeah. yeah. I think I actually learned a little something about myself, I think, in, in that. Because he's never been disrespectful, but he does sometimes. He, he, You know, if I say something, people, you know, but dad, you know, he wants to get that last word in and get his point in. And I, and I believe I was at a point shutting that down. And he, we had a really deep conversation. He was like, just dad, listen, I'm never going to disrespect you, but just hear me. I don't feel like I'm heard. And I was like, got, got you. It. Yeah. Got you. And isn't that something, man? Uh, by the way, man, you know, I'm impressed, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I am thoroughly impressed with you 
as a as a father. Thank you, man. As a husband. Thank you, brother. As a man. Thank you. Uh, because I can tell you, it takes a lot for a parent to allow their child to have a voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, oftentimes, we as parents feel like, hey, I brought you here. I can take you. Yeah, yes. You know, I can yeah. tell you what to do. I was there. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. You know, I know best. You know, yeah. I done spent all this money and spent all this mm-hmm. time and bought all of this stuff. Yeah. You know, you need to listen to me. Yeah. And it's very important that they know that they can have a voice around you. Yes. Because if they, all of us, you know, we may... You know, many of us may not want to be seen, but we want to be heard. Definitely want to be Everybody heard. Everybody want to feel like they're being heard. Yeah. And yeah. it is paramount for your child to know that that's a safe space around you. Yeah. So yeah. salute for that, bro. Thank you, man. Salute yeah. I had to that. work on it. And, and, and again, yeah. it goes back to that younger me, the one, this, you know, like, ah, I got to compensate. I got to, ah, so, you know, I'm not going to try to hear you. You know what I mean? And and, and I, I learned I learned so much from my kids, man. It's it's it, it, it's it it's been beautiful, you know. It's been beautiful to, to you know, see growth and to experience growth, admit when you're wrong. And my wife says, you know, you stubborn. You don't never, you know, and I'm just like, ah, I'm not stubborn, but am I? So it's uh it's beautiful to to experience that, especially with your kids, man. Because they they just I, I look at them and and like I'm I'm amazed, um, not amazed that they're they're good kids. Of course, we all think our our children are are great, but they're respectful. I don't have to as much as I try to tell them, you know, be careful here. No, it is, you know, we both like oh, you still find yourself being that parent. And I told them, I said, look, that's never gonna stop. I'm always going to want to know you okay. I'm always going to want to know when you get somewhere, let me know you okay. You know, my son, he'll do that. My daughter, she'll get there. And I'm like, uh, hello. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. And and I'm just like, I'll oh, just work on that because where the world is today, it is so different from when we grew up. We had, I don't know about you, but I know my neighbors were able to whip my behind and then tell my parents. It was like that for me. Yeah, he was out yeah. there cutting up and boom, 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 bring you to the door. You can't do that now. So a lot of these kids just create their own rules, their own lane, and you can't say nothing. If you say something, they fight you or they or they pull out put a strap out on you, you know? And it's uh I'm just I'm just thankful they are who they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You come a long way. I wanna know though, what is it about your growth and development that you feel that it's not happening fast enough? Mm. Mm. Hmm. Sometime I, 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 you know, I, I, that's a good question. That's a really good question. What do I feel about growth? Um, honestly, as, as much, uh, confidence it seems I have, I, I have to work on that quiet insecurity sometime you know around my peers yeah um and 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 yeah around my peers you know i know all, all those guys in the business and you know and and i'm like hey man you know i you know i'll do that too you know hey man i've been doing this since blah blah blah, blah. you know and you see People make strides, and sometimes you find yourself comparing yourself to that. Like, you know, why? Oh, man, how come I did? Oh, man, I wish I would. But everybody has their path. Um, and I just, that's that's where I I, I fight, that inner fight sometimes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let's go back to that role of Pookie in New Jack yeah. City mm-hmm. uh, in the play. Mm-hmm. Which again, I can't, I can't like give you enough pets for that one. Ah, thank you, man. How much of that? How much of that role uh, has cost you? How much energy has that role cost you? It's a lot of energy. It, it's a it's a lot of energy. Not only what I'm doing, running around, but going to those places, coming out of them. It's the ups That's and what the I'm downs. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about I'm talking about that 
mm-hmm. and inner energy. It's 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 a lot. It's it's taxing. You know, you do two shows a night. It's it's definitely taxing. It um, but I. I in some ways compartmentalize it. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I know I need to use it here. I need to use it here. And then I got to let it go. Like I can't take that with me after sometime I get back to the hotel and I still be having some, you know, some stuff going on in the inside. And I just got to kind of decompress, you know what I mean? And, 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 um, and let that go. But yeah, I compartmentalize it sometime. And I just know that, okay, for here, I'm going to use it. I'm going to let it go here. Use it for here. I try to use the, comedy to release some of that you know um and uh to find that balance you know yeah. find that balance because you got to have that balance right you have to right yeah how do you strike the balance with your your profession mm-hmm. you're, you're in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. and so how do you and then your wife is in the entertainment mm-hmm. industry mm-hmm how do y'all have a normal, like life? Mm-hmm. How do you balance that? How do how do you balance your 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 professional lives mm-hmm. at, with some sense of normalcy for the children's sake? It, it's it's even though we're in the business, we, it, we've always it's always just felt normal. It's just always felt like, hey, this is our profession. This is what we do. But it's always felt normal. Like anybody that knows us, we love to throw great parties. We throw parties. We still got the red cups. Like we, you know what I mean? Like we like to have fun. I get up DJ. Um, we just love people around, good food, good fun, and, and you know, structure with the kids. We, we had a village that a lot of people step in to help. You know, my in-laws helped. My mom came into town, stayed for a while, helped. Um, My wife's cousin helped. Like, we had a lot of people stepped in to help. They gave us the tools to be able to go if we had to travel. Like, if she had to go here or I had to go, if she had to go to Japan and I'm here shooting something or we both had to go overseas or or wherever, we always had a village um, that stepped in. And I think that's what kept that sense of normalcy because everyone around us has that same like energy that normalcy it's like just like i don't have the you know i know a lot of people i know a lot of you know big name people and that but we're not around those people all the time you know we finish doing what we do we come home and and we chill and we don't you know we're not invited to a lot of the big star studded things and it's fine um and I think that kind of just keeps us balanced. Yeah. You know? Do y'all live in L.A.? No, we outside L.A. I knew it. Yes. You know I knew it? Because <laughs> y'all still together. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody that I know in the L.A. area, mm-hmm. and I'll just say that wherever you live, it's mm-hmm. in the L.A. area. Yeah. All of them who have been married for a long time mm-hmm. live outside of L.A. Mm. Yeah. They live everywhere but in LA <laughs> and your reason for doing that really we when we decided to have children we looked for school districts you know good schooling and, and nothing that was overpriced we wanted to find a nice house and at the time that we moved the area we were in it was kind of an upstart area so we went out to a friend of hers um, they lived out that way, and we drove by. We saw a sign that says "New Homes." Like, oh man! So we called it, went, checked out. I was like, "Yo, this this is nice," and that's literally how it happened. We knew we were having children. One of the good school area. We moved there, and we just ended up staying out there because we love the area. You know, we love where we are, and I don't. We didn't think in our heads like, okay, we're gonna get away from all the craziness. It wasn't even wasn't even that thought. You know, it really wasn't because I think wherever we go, we're gonna bring peace. You know what I mean? So we never really felt like, oh, but it was just like, hey, you know, we heard about oh, the school district is great here, and da da da. It's almost like a private school, um, and that's really what we thought about and having space because we were living in an apartment. In the, where we met, we were living in an apartment there, and we knew we wanted a home, so we moved out there. And at that time, I mean, houses were, you know, way cheaper than they are now. I mean, I think houses were like three hundred something thousand dollars at that time. 
So um, that was the smart move. And I, I don't regret that at all. You know, and it's not to say or shame or say that if you're in the inner city that you can't find good schooling. Not to say that at all. It's just um, that's the choice that we made. That's why we moved out. And we just stayed out there. We loved it. And there's so many people now. Yeah, Bokeem Woodbine is out in, in my area. You know, Dub C. Like, it's people you would never think <laughs> is out there. And, and we all in the area. And it's great. It's a nice little community. We have First Friday events. I DJ. People come out. We have food. And just to get to know us in the area, you know. Have you ever thought about coaching little league football or basketball? You know, I I did at one time. I coached my son's team when he was little, little. I, I coached, but it was fun. But man, them parents, mm. whoo, that's yeah, that's a lot. You know, tugging on you. Everybody's think their son is Kobe or Jordan, and. It was a lot. I have fun because doing it and being there with my son. But yeah, I, I'm. I'm. But I would. I, I. I do at some point want to do more in the arts and and you know with acting and and comedy and workshops uh, stuff like that. That's what I would love to do because even working on New Jack City, we've had uh, we had a lot of you know young younger cast members and i remember first meeting them and a lot of them grew up watching my show and i forget that so i'm like oh man they're like oh man you're og or unk uh and then we had some a new cast members this go round so being able to talk to them and tell them hey you got it like you know i can see them thinking i'm like you got it you got it just go be and just watching them like blossom and get it and have the confidence. I mean, we literally had about six new cast members and to see them come in and do their thing, man, it was, it was beautiful to see. So I think that's kind of where my, my niche would be. Yeah. yeah. Man, you multi-talented, man. You got the dancing, you got, uh, the, you got the acting. And might I add, who? might I add this, the first Dancer, hip hop dancer, the transition out of hip hop dancing into acting. I did that first. So, where did you dance? Uh, who did you dance? Oh, Salt and Pepper. I was their main dancer. Um, did you do something with, was it Queen Latifah or something? Uh, a video. Yeah. I did a video, Fly Girl, <laughs> yeah. which Omar Epps was in there too. <laughs> you probably, Omar gonna be mad. Yeah, I, I said I that. <laughs> Omar Epps, yeah, Crystal yeah. Waters, the la da di da da. That video, Chill Rob G. I got the power. Um, gosh, you I was just, dancing um, in the video. Yeah. I, I got the power. Yeah, oh, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, right tonight. I got <laughs> myself and the girl who was lip syncing. I got the power was Nabuche Wright. If you remember her, she was an actress. She was in Dead President. She played the sister to Lorenz Tate's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She was the revolutionary. Okay, Nabuche Wright. She started in the clubs to dancing. A lot of us came from there. Uh, Elise Neal, dancer, Josie Harris, fly girl, dancer, big let, like a lot of people came from dancing and made that transition. And you learned how to dance in Harlem. Oh in man, Harlem. Boogie Down Bronx. Boogie I Down Bronx. You was from Harlem. Mm -mm. A lot of people think that. No, I, I lived there for a long time, but I was born and raised in the Bronx. I moved to Harlem later. Man, you got to start acting like these rappers. Man. <laughs> Every time you go somewhere, you, say, you know, just say Bronx, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, VX, man. Yeah, Bronx, baby. You're South Bronx. Bronx. Then we'll know. We'll know yes, for, sure, for sure. You got to rip it, man. You yes, get, sir. Get a, get a, you know, get a shirt, T-shirt or something, man. Yeah. So we'll know. Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, yeah, I, all this time, man, I thought you was from Harlem. Nah, boogie down Bronx, man, all day. But I lived in Harlem. I lived in Brooklyn. I've been all over, all over. New York, man. Uh, I'm so glad. New York really, uh, I think New York got me prepared for the world. I know. Who make the best rappers? The Bronx or Harlem? <sighs> That's a tough one, man. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's, ah. <laughs> I, I can't say the best. I just, oh man, I love them all, man. I love them all. See, man, you know, like, look, man, <laughs> you, know, you could actually be a politician <laughs> because you ain't finna give nobody no ammunition. I, I ain't like, going no. You no, gonna no. be able to still go up in that room? Hey, listen, this room, this room is whatever, man. Like you, like you know, you know how to. 
Hey man, I just like I said, I just I know what I know. Like all I know is, <laughs> you know, the Bronx. I know I, I I was fortunate to to be there and see up close in the parks. Back then we called them jams. I could see Melly Mel in the park. I could see Furious Five. I could see the Treacherous Three, Shy Rock. I could see them all. I could see Rock Steady, uh, uh, Buck Four, Crazy Legs, Scootyaki, Mr. Wiggles. Those are the cats that inspired me, man. And I, that's why I started getting out there and, you know, getting the cardboard spinning. And, and it was electric, man. It was nothing like it. Watching them plug up the power to the lamppost, you know, getting the turntables out, pulling out the records. Man, that was hip-hop. And then going from there, going to Harlem and seeing that flavor of Harlem, the rap, the style, going to a uh, 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 Harlem week, everybody performing on 125th, Dougie Fresh, all those cats, man, that I know. Um, then going to Brooklyn, you know, and of course, you know, seeing the guy Rakim and, and Big Daddy Kane, uh, uh, just, I, I was happy that I was able to see, you know, every borough just about, you know, I could go to Latin Quarters, you know, dance at Latin Quarters, dance at Union Square, see Boogie Down Productions, you know, KRS, the Nights, see, man, I, that, that right there, man, I, I, that, that's, that's worth a lot. Mm. That's worth a lot, man. I got to see all of that. I think I need to write me a book now. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Hey, man, what is it that you're doing? What kind of regimen that do you uh, go by to maintain that youthful look you got going? Oh, man. And, and do you feel young? Do you I, feel man. Do your body feel young? Yes. Your face look young. Yes, do you, do you, I feel young. Your body ma- matches yes. your face. Okay. I feel young. I, I feel, you know, you got your, your you know, your cricks and cracks every little now and then. But mm. for the most part, man, I feel great. I wake up. Energy, man. I, I I think the two things that I I prescribe to the most: mind my business and drink my water. <laughs> How much water do you drink? Oh, I drink a lot of water, man. I, I try to drink, if not a gallon, I try to get to a gallon if I can. Uh, we have a, a alkaline machine at our home. We drink alkaline water, you know, all day. Um, I, I try, of course, when I come to Houston, I got, I got to have me some soul food. So I got to have me a little, I got to, I got to have something, yeah. but most of the time I try to eat pretty, pretty clean, um, and work out. I, I work out three to four times a week, I you know, different stuff. You know, I got into boxing, the cardio is ridiculous, you know, jumping rope, circuit training. Like I just try to mix it up, you know, and, and, and that's it, man. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Just maintain yeah. Just maintain. Fifty four coming up soon. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who have you worked with that have impressed you the most? Mm. Hmm. In the industry. First thing on my mind is probably Sam Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. How so? When we did Snakes on a Plane. It, it was even though the movie wasn't like an award winning movie. Just his ease, his ease. This is going to be two people. So first, uh, Sam Jackson, his ease, it, it, you know, it didn't seem like he was even trying. And the thing that was crazy, we were shooting that movie, and then he was in his trailer, and he was preparing for the movie he did, uh, Black Snake Moan. He did that. I think Justin Timberlake was in it, um, David Banner. And it was a to- it was about this blues, deep blues player, and he was literally learning how to play, I guess, a blues banjo or something. So we sit in the trailer talking to him. He's learning this stuff for the next movie. And I'm just like, I just didn't think I would have the bandwidth to do that. Um, and his ease, he'd be come in, knock his lines out, boom, he's like <laughs> All right, motherfucker, I see you at the golf course. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then we go right over there to the golf course because it, it, would, it, would, uh, it wouldn't get dark till like 10 o'clock in the summer in, in Vancouver. Uh, so we, he finished his stuff, and I meet him over there, and we play golf. But just his ease, man, it's just his ease about it all. And, and um, it, it just shows he, he worked hard. I mean, coming from the Negro Ensemble Company and, and just – 
everything he he's done it's just you just see it and you've seen it up close and i had to catch myself sometime because i'm doing my scene and i'm looking at him and i'm like oh man i gotta remember my line uh sam jackson definitely one of them and uh danny glover i did a movie called poor boys games independent movie uh but it was a great movie directed by this brother clement virgo uh and danny glover man same thing and i was nervous doing my scene with him so i'm rushing my lines and he was like just relax take it easy listen i was like all right i had to breathe did it a couple of times and then i got into it he would pull me aside just little stuff just 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 dope now when was this this was um Snakes on a Plane, I forgot it was 2000-something. I can't remember. I'm talking about the Danny Glover. Oh, Danny Glover. That was uh, somewhere around, I don't know if it was 2000. I got to look it up. It might have been like 2000, I don't know if it was 2007 or something like that. It was It was a while ago. I have to look it up. I can't remember. So by this, by this time, you 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 in like 16 years in the game. Yeah. 16, 16. yeah. But. I mean, I get it as Danny Glover, but, yeah. but goddamn, you still flex, you know what I'm saying? I know, like, but listen, I'm still yeah, that dude. You got, that, you got a lot of experience, you know, you yeah. got credits and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. you know, people know who you are. Yeah. You got your movies and your sitcom yeah, and yeah. stand up. And, yeah, yeah. But I still have this reverence, man. It's just me. I still, I still do. For people like that, I still have this reverence, man. Like, I, I just... Even if I meet people today that I grew up and I watched and I'm like, I appreciate their work or whatever, I go and I tell them. Like, I let them know. We're in a culture now. We don't do that. we rather talk about or make a meme or whatever as opposed to letting them know how you affected me. Like, when I got to work with with uh, uh, Jeanette Dubois, who played uh, Wilona, you know, in Good mm-hmm. Times, I had her on my show. I had people on my show on purpose that I was like, get them on the show. I had Max Julian, who played Goldie on my show and I'm like yo I was in a position to do that why would not these are people who I watch whether you may think good bad or indifferent these are people that you know cracked that door down when 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 Janae Dubois got rest her soul was telling me the stories of what they went through and I'm like man just to make you know certain amount of money I'm just like yo and then I've seen people on set screaming about, you know, they don't have the right food in their trailer or whatever. I'm like, yo, how can you do that? We are in a blessed position. We're doing what we love. We're getting to, getting paid to do what we love. Getting paid to do what we love. And some people, you know, they love to do other stuff. But this right here, this is, come on. So for me, when I would work with somebody like that, of course I get nervous. I'm still going to work on my stuff. But, of course, I'm going to get nervous. I'll get over it. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, that's that's just how it was. I remember first meeting Denzel playing basketball with Denzel at the Hollywood Y. We had a whole group of people that would go there to play, actors, musicians, everybody. we get out there and play. And I remember going in there, boom, boom, and, and I'm sorry. I got to tell the story. Don't tell me you dunked on Denzel. <sighs> yeah, I dunked oh. on Denzel, man. Oh, I dunked man. on him, and he said, <laughs> <laughs> I ducked on him and, and, and he caught me like this. Oh my gosh, man. And oh, I took man. a picture with him. I'll show you the picture too. Uh took a picture with him right after, man. He was so cool. And he was just he was opening a restaurant, him and some other guys called George's in LA. It's him, Norm Nixon, a bunch of other guys. And he just said, Man, y'all come on down. Came down. I was like, yo, that's Denzel. I mean, and he he wasn't Denzel he's the Denzel now, but he still was Denzel to me. I was like, yo, this is Denzel. It seems like Denzel has been Denzel just always. He's been Denzel forever. Even when, <laughs> even when he did his the little low budget movies, mm-hmm. you know, it was still Denzel, Denzel because Denzel makes every I don't care what you get, this man, this man gonna bring that yeah. character to life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. He does, that, man. Yeah, man. That, that 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 guy right there. Man. So that reverence I have, man. I just I just yeah. have it. So when I work with people like that, you know, I, I get nervous. And some people that I, I won't get as nervous, or you know, or just even working with who working doing New Jack City, man. We're getting to work with, you know, Kane, who was a friend, man, from hip hop, and being able hip hop did that. You know, I was a dancer. I used to be in the tunnel, battling Scoob and Scrap. He would be like. 
Hip hop did that. You know what I mean? Getting to work with Gary. Gary's been putting in work for years. Gary durdan has been putting in work for years. CSI, this dude was a walk by on a different world at first. Then he, you know, got his line, then his videos and boom. Like that, I mean, I it's in Alan Payne and I I mean that that to me is everything. That to me is everything. Y'all ever uh, get together as a cast and just hang out a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah, 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 man. We hang out, man. We we, we got here to do uh, Houston. Uh, you know, Alan took, we took the whole cast, everybody, cast, crew, everybody to eat. You know, we just sat down, had a good time, man. He paid for everything. And, you know, we, we just always, the whole tour over the two years we've been doing it, just about, it's felt like about two years. Um, it's just been drama-free, no egos, None of that, just just cool, just uh, some some seasoned brothers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that, Still that, going. Well, that's rare. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. rare. There's it is always one. Yeah, that's got to be acting like the yeah. thing is all about man, them. We haven't had that man. It's been well, it's that's, been great. That's a blessing in that yeah. case, man. Y'all can run this thing as long as y'all want. To. Yeah, man. I would love to, man. But I know Jakarius, and shouts out to Jakarius, man. Yeah, you know, Houston's yeah. own. Absolutely. You know, he really, you know, he called. We had been trying to work together for years. He called me for something. I don't know. It might have been ten years ago or something. I couldn't do it. And he was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get in touch with you, man. I'm gonna call you. We are gonna work together. I'm like, all right, cool. And then when he called me for this, when they originally told me when they sent the offer, and it was Pookie. I was like. Pookie, I'm like, come on, man, like that's easy. And da 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 da. They just want me to be funny. I was like, man, I wanna I wanna show them like my dramatic side. You know, I wanna play stone. I wanna play something else. Called up Chris. I said, yo, man, doing New Jack City, they want me to play Pookie, man. He said, Negro, you go out there and you kill that joint. I was like, okay. And then you I made it dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you add those dramatic. beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to think about it because the thing is, automatically people throw me in the in the, in the comedy joint, which is fine. But I, I like to show layers. Like, yo, I can do this over here. I fought for a long time to even to get on dramas. You know, I did CSI Miami. I did Grey's Anatomy, Station 19. I was on the pilot for Blue Bloods. I played Donnie Wahlberg's original partner. I mean, they ended up completely doing something different with, with, with the role. Um, but I had to fight. I always had to fight to show people I can do that. I'm not just, just funny. Like, the funny stuff is easy for me. It's like, I want, I want to be able to get to that texture, that other stuff that I got stored down. I want to bring that to surface, you know what I mean? And that's why I chose to do, you know, Pookie the way I did it, was to not just make him funny and comic relief, but just show this dude's plight, to show his fight, to show that 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 back and forth, that, you know, that voice over here and that voice over here, trying to keep him, even though it's funny when he ends up relapsing, you know, it's a fight. He's got the weight of like, yo, I told them I'm going to, you know, not mess up. You know, I'm, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to, you know, help them bring Nino down. But here I am fighting myself and I couldn't help it, you know. And, and then saying, you know what, hey, Scotty, just tell my mama, you know, I, I, try, to, I, I try to do her proud, you know. So I, I just try to give it more levels, man, and, and – and uh, so people can go home and say, man, I, he was funny, but man, he gave me something else. So when you gave me that compliment when I saw you, that meant everything. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, you, you gave us something else. And then, like I said, I had my two kids with me. And, you know, they're in a whole total different laugh bracket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were like laughing and they were like really like even in the serious parts mm -hmm. they were totally captivated but so was the rest of the audience yeah yeah i mean you did well man and you made people proud you made people proud and the, the trip part about that that character is that that's a character that everyone can relate to yes everybody got a pook in their yeah. family and shouts out to chris rock yeah and big, shout, big yeah. loves to chris rock yeah, man absolutely yeah shouts out to Chris Rock, the original Pooh. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. But wow, man. Um, you you have 
you I know you got so much more to do and I know you you, yeah. you got so much more to offer but mm -hmm. thank you for what you've done so far man. Uh, you know thank like you, man. if you stop right now man you know we wouldn't be mad we wouldn't be <laughs> mad as far as like, it's, you wouldn't have anything to really be mad about cuz you've been blessed yeah. beyond man beyond measure man yeah man. you've been blessed man I'm shooting so. my first special August 2024 man my first special your first stand up special, special. yeah now, where, where is it going to stream I'm shoot stream? I'm, I have I have Two yeah, did, two did, brothers did. that are, you know, investing, believe in me, and I was like, I'm not waiting for nobody. So you're gonna film in the shop at a film it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I'm I'm going to stay close to you. Yes, sir. Uh, in regards to where you take that to, okay? Because I can assist you. Okay. You know. All right, brother. Yeah. I'm, I'm in now, baby. All right, man. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll. We'll definitely uh, uh, stay in touch and, and keep me updated on what I you will. with that. That would be good to see, man. That would yeah. be good to see. If I looked up right now and saw a Flex special, I'm going to click on it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to click. If I saw that on just, you know, how they have those apps. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> have the, um, they have just the picture. Of, yeah, a little clip of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm clicking on that. Yeah. So Thank that's you, that's a good thing, man. And I'm happy for you, man. Appreciate you, you man. Know, um, Salute for all your success and, you know, so far and the success that's yet to come. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, man. I got one more question. Yes, sir. When it's time for you to go and you ain't got no more, mm -hmm. how you want to be remembered? I don't even speak in those terms. Uh, I don't even put that out there. I'm I'm eternal. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> No more talk. <laughs> no more talk. That's a good one.